How many people have actually checked out Fairy Tale Zero? What's up, guys? BDA here. This is my review of Fairy Tale Zero. The spin-off that shows maybe his backstory as well as shows some interactions between her and Zero. The reason behind this video is that we're about to go into a flashback. That's maybe it's a flashback. So I wanted to touch on this chapter and the spin-off to see exactly what we know so far and then compare it what we're about to get. Compare it to what we're about to get. This series has 13 chapters, so I'm gonna do it in chapters of three. Then the last chapter is gonna be the, the finishing and just the ending chapter, the recap, all that, and then you know possible theories going forward. Chapters one to three. This starts with Mavis, right? right? Mavis, we didn't know, she used to work at a guild called the Red Lizard Guild, and now she's six years old at this point, the Red Lizard Guild. And the reason why she's there is the fact that her parents died while they were working for the guild, and apparently they owed the guild master money, so she's working it off. Mind you, she's six years old. Well, the whole time she's getting treated terribly, but she's making the best of it because she's saying I have somewhere to sleep, you know, the master gives me scraps, so she's maintained a positive mindset. The reason behind this is that her parents told her while she was younger that if she doesn't cry, she gets to meet the fairies. So she's held on to that this whole time. She doesn't even have shoes. I mean. The master gave her shoes, but he took them back because he felt like it. He took the shoes back, and his daughter Zero, who is the same age as Mavis, he's about to give her the shoes. Like, she has shoes of her own, but he takes Mavis's only pair. He's about to give it to Zero. So that's why we see Mavis all the time, currently, without any shoes, because she's never really had it, and she's gotten used to not having shoes. Now, Red Lizard is attacked by this girl called Blue Skull, and basically everybody is killed. Zero on, is hurt as well and Mavis and her run away but they're there on that island for seven years by themselves you know fairy tale loves you know the seven year time skip we flash forward and it's seven years later now and we have visitors to the island three visitors and they're people that we've seen before not seen before but that we know of we've seen two of them I believe so first is Ward Sequin Ward Sequin if you don't know is that tree guy who is ranked fourth in the wizard saint we also have Precht Gable which we know him as Hades, who is the second master of fairy tale. The third person is Yuri Dreyar. Yuri Dreyar is Makarov's dad. So he looks just like Laxus, but he just has longer hair. They come to the island and they've come to search for the Jade Treasure. Um, we know this because when Mac, uh, Yuri, he stumbles upon the house that Zira and Mavis, they're staying in. And he stumbles upon them and then he goes in the back and forth with Mavis about this treasure. Now Mavis says, why would I tell you? He says, well, I can just take it by force, but let's play a game. So they go into this truth game, and this truth game is basically a game of wits. And seeing through your opponent, Yuri tried to use this to basically take advantage of Mavis, because at this point she's 13 years old. So he's like, um, a truth game with a little girl, I'm gonna walk all over her. But instantly he realizes that Mavis is a lot smarter than he thought, because the game basically is this. I'm gonna try and break it down as best as I can because it's, it's kind of complicated. So I guess that Mavis is a girl. Truth. She cannot guess that I'm a boy because they're in relation to each other. I say that Mavis has a nose. She cannot say that I have a nose as well because you would be doing things forever. If you guess something about somebody, your opponent cannot go ahead and guess the same thing because you would be playing the game forever. Whatever you guess about each other, they cannot have correlation with each other. They start the game. This is a dry run and Mavis, is, Mavis says that, Yuri, you are in your 20s. Yuri says, no, you're wrong, I'm in my teens. They proceed to start in the real game, but then Mavis reveals that, hey, you know I would've won that last round because I said that you're in your 20s. Then you went ahead and said something in direct correlation to it and related to it and said that, no, you're in your teens, so therefore I would have won. So then that showed her wit and that she knew the game better than Yuri already. She stated that she'd been reading books for seven years. So all the books that were in the library, she read all those books for seven years because the, the Mavis that we know now, she is the master strategist. So that comes from reading all those books for all those years and she's super smart. Before that, Yui tried to trick her and say that he's a biologist searching for a plant. But how she tricked him was she said that if you're here, you're probably looking for this Eureka plant or something like that. And he was like, nah, we're not looking for the Eureka plant because we already have 
toxins to, to, to oppose that. She said, you know what, what are you really here for? Because the Eureka plant is not something that needs toxins, that's basic biology. So know for a fact you're not a biologist. She's extremely perceptive and smart. Not to spend too much time on this game they played, but they, they get into the game and Mavis told Yuri, I'm gonna win this game in one round. And Yuri said, that's not possible. I've been playing this game all my life. And he's in a monologue at this point. Mavis says, you've blinked 57 times since we started playing. That, that stumps him because if you think about this, if he says, yes, it's still a lie because he doesn't know. If he says no and Mavis is correct, it's a lie either way because he doesn't know. So he gave up because Mavis is brilliant. Now Warred and Prak, they come over and mind you, this whole time Zira is hiding and she's just throwing out things to Mavis like in her head like, oh my God, Mavis, why are you doing this? You're gonna get us killed. Warren and Prak, they come back. I mean, I'm calling Hades. Warren and Hades, they come over and they say, well, we can't find the Jade Treasure. Somebody stole this. So Mavis said, take me with you. I want to find the Jade Treasure. They take Mavis with them and then before they leave, she's like, I want to take my best friend as well. This is Zira. Yuri has this weird face like, okay, how old are you, Zira? And maybe it's like, ah, uh, why are you asking all those questions already? That's just my friend, whatever. And it, it really ends there because they get on the boat and then Warred, he kind of sees how smart Mavis is already. He's like, all right, let's take her with us because she could be of some help. It was, it was a good backstory. What we know so far about Mavis is that she's super smart. Like she is a, a genius, essentially, because of all those books that she's read. Um, she's 13 years old at this point because that's the seven year time skip. Um, she's been living on the island for seven years. The island that she was living on, by the way, is the Tenro Island. Remember, the Tenro Island is that island that Acnologia attacked. So Tenro Island is the island of origin for Mavis. I think the first three chapters were very informative and it gave us some good information on Mavis. And now we're starting to deduce the type of person that Mavis is and how she really became the way she is now. So like the video if you did, let, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think or thought about those first three chapters. Like I said, I will be doing the whole Fairy Tales Zero, but they're gonna be broken down into chapters, three chapters in one video. So again, like the video if you did, let me know what you think, comment, please subscribe, and share the video as well. And don't forget to have a great day, guys.